Hello everyone and welcome to Inside Healthcare. Coming up in this program, how you can deck the halls but not add to your waistline. We'll have some great tips for you later in the program. But first we introduce you to an amazing woman from St. Paul. She was born with a heart defect and she was in such poor health most of this year. She didn't even know if she would live long enough to see these holidays. And it's my pleasure to introduce and to have with us Maria Leggett. Thank you so much for being with us. Thanks for having me. Now, you had told me that it's been a really rough year, and we'll get more into that. But first, can you kind of take us back to when you first discovered that you heart, had a heart defect, and, and what did that mean? How did that affect your life? Yeah, I was um, probably eight years old, and my parents noticed that I was kind of coughing a lot at night and just really wasn't able to keep up with the other kids. And so they took me into different doctors and got me checked out and heard my heart was kind of funny, and we went to specialists. and. Um, from then on, they diagnosed me with a congenital heart problem. Um, and throughout my life, it didn't really affect me um, that much. I tried to participate as much as I could. But when I was in my mid-20s, I started really feeling sick a lot and um, not being able to do everything I could do. And I think that. our viewers might think you're probably still in your early 20s. Yeah. You look so <laughs> young and youthful. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't it's uh, good genetics, I guess. <laughs> so you were in college at this time, and all of a sudden you weren't able to do things yeah. that you could in the past? I tried to you know, continue to go out with my friends and um, live a normal life, but I just kept on getting sick. I was tired a lot. I'd have headaches, abdominal problems, and I never really connected those symptoms I to, wouldn't either. to anything you know? to do with the heart. So it was, you know, should I go to the stomach doctor? Should I go to the woman doctor? Should I go to, you know, a headache specialist? Um, so I just kept on pushing and pushing and saying something's not right and it's just not working. I don't feel good. Um, so I finally was diagnosed with congestive heart failure when I was probably 26. And maybe you can tell our viewers what does that exactly mean if they're not familiar with it? It means that the heart can't pump efficiently enough to supply blood to the rest of the body. And so blood sometimes backs up or fluids will back up into the chest and abdominal area. So that's why I was having a lot of abdominal problems and it was hard for me to eat certain foods because it, the fluid was backing up into my abdomen. Wow. So then so, um, how did the doctors treat it? What types of things did you undergo? Some cutting edge treatment, I understand. Too. I did. Um, they put me on medications right away and it helped a lot right away, but um, you know, I was, a mid-twenties girl, I had to severely change my diet and mm. how I, you know, did things. Um, and then after some time, my heart would go into weird rhythms or arrhythmias and it wouldn't stop. And so I had to have an ablation, which is where they go in and freeze a part of the heart that causes the irregular heartbeats. Um, I had a pacemaker and ICD implanted. And then um, several times I'd have to go in for cardioversions which is where they put you under and shock you back into a normal rhythm. Oh, wow. So. <laughs> that would be scary for you. Yeah, it was, there's a couple times I would go to sleep um, really anxious and scared and crying and I'd wake up in that same state and the doctors would say, you're done, <laughs> you're better, you're, you're fine now. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> I guess, but I'm scared. <laughs> but, so after all of these treatments, then you were continuing, you were doing okay, much better. But then um, earlier this year, late last year? Yeah, um, I got to the point where I just wasn't okay with the quality of life I had. I would go into my doctor and say, you know, I can hardly work full time. I can't go grocery shopping and by myself and carrying the groceries anymore. And it just wasn't where I wanted to be. I, it's, I didn't want to live like that anymore. So I went to a different um, doctor and he said, I think we need to evaluate you for a transplant. Wow. And he said, I'll make you feel better. <laughs> and I said, okay, whatever you say, I'll do it. <laughs> so I just was so desperate at that time to feel like a normal woman my age. And this was in April you were put on a transplant list? April of this year, I was put on the heart transplant list. And after they do various tests and evaluations, um, to make sure that you qualify and to make sure that you'll be healthy enough to qualify but sick enough, you know, that they want to give you a heart as well. Can you share any of that, what's involved with that? Um, they do a stress test, a right heart catheterization, a biopsy, a right heart 
or a biopsy of the heart. Um, they will do some psych, eval psych evaluations um, and then different like blood work for diseases to make sure that you know if they give you a new heart it's going to last and you don't have any infections at the time and stuff like that. So it was pretty intense testing for a couple of weeks. I had to say no work because I just was so sick at the time I couldn't do both. Wow. And then you continue to get very sick this past year? Yep. I, um, by the time I was put on the transplant list, I was at home all the time. I, it was to the point where taking a shower <clears throat> was a very big ordeal because I didn't have enough energy to do it or I couldn't get up the stairs or just waking up and eating for that day was really, really exhausting. And I was at home with an IV pump in because I needed medication to keep me, keep my heart going. Um, so that was, it was nice to be at home that I could sit with the medication mm -hmm. and have it pumped in, but it was also very scary. I'd have to carry around this medication and switch it out and would it clog or run out in the middle of the night and that kind of stuff. So it was, it was pretty nerve wracking and my family went through a lot and friends, you know, were there for me. And, Wow, I mean, some people, they, they're on that waiting list for a long time. Yeah, I was very lucky because I have a very um, rare blood type. And so the wait for somebody with my blood type is shorter because there's less people for a demand for it. Oh, um, okay, I was gonna say, how would that be, okay. And then I'm also, it's also the universal receiver, so I can receive any blood type. So I was really lucky to have that and I didn't wait long. I waited a hundred days and some people can wait for years and um, a lot of people don't get their heart. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you got the call on April 4th? I got the call on August 4th. August 4th, I'm sorry, yes, yep, August 4th. August 4th and... Um, Just four months ago. Yes, I actually told my husband the day before that I didn't know how much longer I was going to last because I knew the medication wasn't working anymore and I was going downhill and um, got the call the next day and within 10 minutes. The next day? <laughs> yeah, the next day. Wow, your prayers were answered one time. Yes, and within probably 10, 15 minutes I burnt out all my energy because I was so excited, but I was so sick. So. Um, my family came and friends came to visit me and, you know, wait, wait in the hospital for the prep and everything. And I was asleep. <laughs> I couldn't, my body didn't have enough energy to make it through that point. I, I just was gone. I just couldn't wow. do it. So, and I told my husband if this, you know, if the heart isn't going to come, if it's not right for me, I'm going to have to stay in the hospital because I can't go home. I just... So even though that they, it was a match and they had a heart, you still didn't know if it was going to work for you right? Because when you went to the hospital? Right. They have what they call dry runs, and it might be that the doctor gets the heart and sees it and knows it's not going to be right. Or they might um, go to the hospital where the heart is and um, measure it and it's not right. So they'll have a match based off of blood type and... Um, size and stuff, but when they physically see it, there might be something wrong with it. So some people have dry runs where they'll go in and get prepped and get the IVs and wait in their bed, and then the doctor comes um, in and says, "Go home." So I was tough really that would be. yeah, yeah. So so what happened next? Then? Yeah. Um, so I I was kind of out of it, but the doctor said, you know, it's it's a match and we're going to go through with it, and I don't really remember saying goodbye. <laughs> I don't remember being wheeled into the OR, which is probably a good thing because it would have been so overwhelming and nerve wracking and emotional that I don't know if I could have dealt with it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and then the next morning, or er, it was the next day, I woke up and you know, I saw my brother staring down at me and <laughs> said, can you get away? You're too close. <laughs> <laughs> Typical no. brother. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're in my space. <laughs> um, no, I, you know, I, it's uncomfortable when you wake up and the first week or so it's, it's not fun, but, you know, I was so happy to be through the procedure and be on the other side and start to get on with my life and, you know, get to do things that I never had done before because... Did you instantly have more energy and... and 
Um, some people wake up and they notice a difference right away. For me, um, I needed a couple of days to really realize what had happened. Because I was uncomfortable, I was in pain, um, but after I think four days I was able to walk upstairs and that was it for me. I, I just, I was convinced, I mean, I, I didn't believe it at first. Wow. But then I walk, walked up the stairs and I wasn't out of breath and... What was that moment like? I, I have it on video. It's just, I still watch it today and it's just, I'm light as a feather, like walking up the stairs and <laughs> I actually asked the person, can I do it again? Because <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really believe it and it, it was so amazing for me to do and they had me standing the next day. So they, they really want you up and going and get blood circulation and all that kind of stuff. And um, within a week or two, I started doing cardio rehab at St. John's and really getting back on my feet. And um, before I knew it, I was asking them when I could jog and <laughs> when I can go for long walks and when can I drive again. And it's, it's just back to what I was before and better because I have better. a better heart. <laughs> it's like a second chance at life. Very much so, yeah. yeah. And you look great, you're doing well, you're still doing rehab? I'm still doing rehab. Um, you know, some of the medications are, are pretty harsh and so getting used to them, you know, it takes a while but I have so much more energy now. I can do, you know, so many things that I'm trying to start a nonprofit, um, support groups that I'm engaged in and doing stuff with the Go Red campaign, it's just so rewarding and I get it, I would never have been able to do this before, so. And talking about the Go Red for Women campaign, your ambassador with them, mm -hmm. what's your message that you wanna get out to women about heart disease? Um, the biggest thing that I see is um, they don't think it could ever happen to them or I have this symptom and I'm just either getting older or it must be because of this or it must be because of this. It's a very rational, you know, thing or rationalization to say, oh, it's not nothing serious. But if I hadn't persisted and kept on going to the hospital, I don't know if I'd be here today. You know, it just, it's a feeling that something's not right and I really encourage women to, you know, seek that out because you know when something's not okay. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm helping some girls with. <laughs> and then personally, what are you hoping for in the near future here for you? Oh gosh, I have so many things. Um, next year, I hope to run a 5K. Wow. <laughs> so, <laughs> I've never run before, so it, it'll be interesting. Um, like I said, I, I hope to get my nonprofit up and going for um, to support young adult patient, heart patients through the process of emotions and um, money, insurance, just you know, losing our jobs, what that's like, what your rights are as a patient. Um, Especially for a young heart patient. Definitely. Um, some patients don't know what they can ask for. They don't know what they can have. They don't know that there's resources out there for them. So I really want to be there for them. And the support is the big thing. I mean, you, you're, you're supposed to be young and vibrant, but your life's taken away from you. So you have to mentally adjust with that too. So you'll be doing a lot of things during February, <gasps> during the heart month? Yes, the yes. I plan to do the Macy's. Um, Go Red Fashion Show. Wow, um, you're going to be one of the models. Huh? Yes, that'll be very exciting. I did that last year and it was so much fun and met so many wonderful women. Um, so I'm really excited to do that again. And I have a couple galas and um, fundraisers coming up. So. Well, it's been fun and exciting to have you with us today. Thank we you. really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for having Thank me. Thank you and wish you all the best. Thanks. In um, the holidays and also yes. in the upcoming new year. And First holiday with a new heart. Oh, it's wow. Very fun. <laughs> it's so inspiring. So thank you so much, Maria. Appreciate Thanks. it. Thanks. And um, coming up next, um, we'll give you some of those tips on, um, you know, how you can enjoy the holidays without pounding, adding on those pounds. So stay with us, everyone. In the event of a car crash, three out of four kids are not as secure as they should be because their car seats are not used correctly. But the latch system makes it easier to get it right and to hold your kids tight. Anchor. Tether. Latch. Learn more at safercar.gov. 
Welcome back to Inside Healthcare. Joining us now is Brenda Navin. She's fitness and nutrition, nutritional uh, specialist with Woodwinds Waste Wellness. Thanks, Brenda, for being with us. Thanks, Jody. So last week I went to two holiday parties. This week I have two holiday parties. What can we do so we can enjoy these holiday parties and the holiday season and not put on the pounds and gain extra weight? Well, you know, this is a season of parties, like you just mentioned, party after party, family gatherings. And oftentimes this can be a um, period of time of about four weeks where people do pack on a few pounds, um, anywhere from one to two to 10 pounds, depending upon what we're doing. But this really doesn't have to be a time of weight gain. Um, really, people need to think about what their goals are. And if you've been trying to lose weight, maybe this isn't the time that you want to be losing weight during the holidays and maybe your goal should be to maintain. So really not setting yourself up for big expectations of weight loss during the season is a great way to start. Then the second thing is, is that during that season of the holidays, it's not so much the parties that you're going to, it's what you're doing in between the parties as well. So if you're taking leftovers home and other um, treats and people are bringing in treats to work and that kind of thing, those are what really add up the calories, not so much the parties. If you have one or two parties a week and you select, I would recommend selecting like look at the buffet or at the table, select three things that you really enjoy um, and pick those things and eat the foods that you really, really like. You know, if you don't like it, dinner rolls and you can have those any time of the year, why bother wasting your calories on that and slapping on extra butter and those kind of things. I'm glad so, I, I did just that. I did yeah. eat the dinner rolls at one of the parties I went to. Yeah. Now, if it was a, you, maybe it's your grandmother's, you know, homemade dinner rolls and you love them, well, then have it. But, mm -hmm. you know, really kind of look at what um, the party, what they're serving, and select the, you know, three things that you really, really enjoy. And then truly enjoy the experience of eating those foods as mm -hmm. well. What about, um, you know, it seems like we're all so busy to find time, and I know like keeping active and moving would also help to help you maintain during this time. Certainly so physical activity is going to be really important to, you know, maintaining your weight. Um, and if you have a schedule, try to stick to that schedule. So maybe you're getting up in the morning and exercising, but if you typically exercise in the evening, maybe those parties are kind of interfering. So maybe you need to do a little adjustment or maybe you walk at um, lunch at work. You can also try to think of maybe some family activities, get your kids involved. Okay, what could we do this week that's um, more physical? And maybe they each plan an outing, like you're gonna go ice skating or you're gonna go sledding. And maybe pick that really big hill so that you're you know, going up and down the hill, working out your quads, burning calories, and you're having fun at the same time. So being um, exercising doesn't have to mean doing formal exercise. It can be fun family activities. It could be even just walking around at the mall. It's not getting that exactly. cardio, but you're moving. And you're moving your body. And really, it's not so much the calories that you're burning while you're doing a formal exercise. It's what you're doing throughout the day. So let's say you do have a day of shopping, making sure that you park, which you may have to anyway, really far out so that you're walking a little bit more. Um, those kind of things can add up to a larger calorie burn throughout the day. Or if you're taking the escalator, maybe walk up and down that escalator? Yeah, yeah, taking the stairs at the mall too instead of taking the escalator or the elevator and just simply doing that at work as well. Instead of, you know, maybe you work on the fifth floor instead of taking the elevator, take the stairs every day. And those calories are really going to add up to what you're burning. And if you can't get in like the 30 minutes that they recommend, what mm -hmm. about, can you do like 10 minutes first? Yes, absolutely. Is that just as effective? Yep, just as effective. The research shows that doing a 10 minute chunk in the morning, maybe a 10 minute chunk um, at lunch and 10 minutes in the evening, are you're gonna have the same benefit. And I know it's also important to, um, you know, not to neglect like the fruits and vegetables and whole grains and not just consume all the high fat treats right. and things like right. that. Right. So, you know, say you're back at that party situation and you're selecting three things that you're going to eat. Um, try to make one of them a fruit or a vegetable. And then also make sure that in the morning when you're having breakfast, which is another good thing to make sure you eat breakfast, um, make sure that you have a, a fruit at breakfast and making, making sure that you get some protein in as well, like 20 grams of protein is a good rule of thumb. I've been trying to add more protein in the morning yeah. too, just for that reason. Yeah. Right. And you're going to feel fuller, longer, and also adding more fruits and vegetables in has that fiber, which fills you up. So you're going to feel much better um, throughout the day and less chances of binging on maybe some of those indulgence 
foods at those parties if you are eating regular meals. What about if you know that you have an event to go to in the evening and then you try not to eat the rest of the day? Is that a save up your calories for the for the big yeah, party? That That's not a good, good idea. idea. Because what happens, you start altering your brain chemicals and your hunger signals and some of those pathways get really mixed up and then you're more likely to crave really um, fatty, carbohydrate rich foods like sugary foods mm -hmm. and then you're going to get um, not feel so well and you're going to overindulge. So wow. eating a well balanced diet throughout the day and then again like selecting those favorite foods at, at the party. Any other tips that you give to your clients on whether it's fitness or nutrition to get them through the holidays here? I think one of the biggest things is just to think of what is the reason for the season to you and um, you know what are you celebrating and why are you going to this party? What are you doing? What are your goals? And really think about what that season um, means to you, whether it's a spiritual holiday, maybe it's just um, gathering with your friends. The, the focus doesn't have to revolve around what you're eating. It should revolve around what that season means to you. And if you have that kind of focus, instead of thinking about what kind of treats are going to be at the party, um, you're more likely to be successful. And I would think, too, with everything, with trying to get so much done with all the activities and that, that you can tend to get more stressed out. And Absolutely. stress is not good either, right? Stress for is often a trigger for us to have unhealthy behavior. So um, again, it comes back to thinking about what is the reason for the season. And um, if you are less stressed, you're more likely to make better choices and everything and really enjoy yourself. And I know a lot of times people, especially when you get to particular holidays like Christmas, people are driving from one family, one party to another, and they don't enjoy the day at all. You know, they're um, they're in the car half the day, just driving from one one party to the next. And you know, thinking about what are your priorities and is that what you really want to be doing? And I had mentioned that you're with Woodwinds Waste Wellness. How um, can you offer some help, like to some of our viewers out there? We offer a variety of programs. We are registered dietitians, certified personal trainers, and we also have a health and wellness coach. So whatever your needs are, we're here to help you reach your goals. And the one thing that's nice about our services that we offer is that you can interchange your visits with anyone. So say you decide to do some personal training and that's not really what you wanted, you can switch and see a dietitian or a health and wellness coach. And we also have a brand new facility um, remodeled, so we're excited about that for the new year as and well. And it's located by the hospital? We're located um, on the Woodwinds Health Campus in an adjacent building. Yeah. Any final advice for our viewers? I think um, everyone should, again, just enjoy the season and, and think about um, you know, being with your family and friends and um, set realistic goals for the holidays so you can enjoy yourself. All right. Well, hope you enjoy the holidays as well, Brenda. Thank you so much Thanks. for being with us. It's been great. Great advice. Thanks, Jody. Appreciate it. And we appreciate you joining us. We hope you'll join us next time on, health, on Inside Healthcare. We'll see you then, everyone. Thanks. Inside Healthcare. For more information, visit stjohnshospital-mn.org or call 651-326-7800.